since it is Valentine's Day, of course there has to be something about love in there. And in the great lyrics of Whitney Houston, learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. The hardest thing to do. You can fall in and out of love. You can admire and love people. But for me personally, learning to love, love without conditions myself was the most difficult thing to do. So if anyone has ever read my book, Damaged, um, you will know that my journey, which I chose, was very special in helping me to spend a lifetime learning about myself and who I am. So first of all, I contemplated this kind of off and on all week and I've been studying um, the life of the masters and teachers of the Far East. I've been studying the I Am discourses for the last couple of weeks while I'm driving around making my deliveries. And uh, you know, I honestly feel that it's recognizing that we really are God that gives us the ability to love ourselves unconditionally. And that can be the most difficult thing to own. You can say it, you can hear it, and people will tell you, the Bible tells you, you're made in the image of God. Why is it the most difficult thing to absorb? Why is it so hard to understand? And that's because of our subconscious mind. We were talking about conscious and subconscious in class on Friday. Throughout our lives, starting at birth, in our childhood, our subconscious is being fed. We are being implanted with the beliefs of others. Our caretakers, our siblings, our teachers in life teaches us all about their feelings, their emotions, and their truths. And if you're anything like I am, being brought up, you are learned to, you are taught to be respectful of God, um, to never say God's name in vain, to be connected with God in many other different forms, but you are never, I was never taught that I am God. What does that mean you are created in the likeness of God? We don't look anything like each other, do we? But there's something within us, all of us, that connects us. We are God. We are that perfect expression of divinity. That time when you feel so happy and so loving, that's God. How can you not look in the mirror and look past what has been implanted and see the divine perfection. God, it's so easily said, isn't it? But it's so difficult to do. Everything that we do in our life, the decisions we make, the way we dress, what we say, how we act, is all connected to how somebody else perceives us. Everything. How do we change that and start doing what we need to do for us. What do you need to do for you? We are all a whole, but yet we are extremely individual. Extremely individual. Everything we do affects the whole, but everything you do is so important for how you treat yourself. How many times do we say, I just can't wear these certain things, they make me look bad. I wish I wasn't here today. Or why does my life have to be so difficult? And why is this person so mean? Why are people so jealous? Jealousy is so ugly, it makes you do terrible things. How do we look past other people's faults and recognize that they really are God also? but they live in unawareness. How do we look past our faults that we think that we have? 
How do we look past it all and say, my God, I'm perfect. How could I not be perfect? How can you not respect and love God and not respect and love yourself when you are created from the same exact source? So I want to share some of the things with you that really grabbed my attention this week in studying. Um, Baird T. Spaulding is, they're asking Baird T. Spaulding questions. He's the author of Life and Masters of the Far East. Fabulous book of six if you ever get the opportunity to read them. I highly suggest that you do. Question. What is the first law of the universe? What is the first law? Answer. The first law is I am. That is the lost word. We are beginning to realize God, I am. Question. I should like to know more about the I am as the masters presented it to you. Answer. I am is the second word in the language. It means the complete acceptance that you are God. God, I am. The word God is to be the first. God is the greatest vibration. And then your acceptance is I am. So recognizing the power and the energy of God is first and foremost. And the real connection of that energy is you connecting with it and saying, I am. So what is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost means the whole of the I am. Spirit in complete action in every form. Question, how does one bring forth the Christ? Answer, the Christ must be born in each one. Jesus gave us the example of this. You bring forth that which is within you by turning your attention and concentrate, concentrating upon that very thing. The very thing is that Christ is within you. You are not separated from Christ. Jesus didn't come here to be idolized. He came here to teach you and show you who you really are, what you really are, and how amazing that each and every one of us are. That's why he always referred to us as brothers and sisters and that we are one. We are one with the Father and the Father exists within each and every one of us. Question. When we wish something that is ours by our divine right, is it okay to demand it? If anything is yours by your divine right, there will be no need to demand it. Our own acceptance of illusions negates the good that we want. When you give expression to the divine nature within you, you will find that whatever you will use at hand, the realization of this permits you to know that the good is accomplished before you express the thought. Then the need will never arise. Be still and know that I am God. So if you have a hard time understanding that, it's all about what you attract to yourself. What do you want? What do you need? What do you feel you're worth having? Okay, but wanting and needing are actually cannot be used in a positive form because if you really feel that you want it or that you need it, then you just get excited about it coming to you and it comes. If it is meant to be for your highest and best good, the universe, God, will bring it to you. You simply think it. You see it, for if you cannot see it, you can't make it happen. And then that feeling inside you switches. That feeling from need, the neediness, to the I deserve, I will, and I look forward to when it comes. It shifts something in the paradigm. And that frees up 
all the limitations and allows it to come to you. I think a lot of that came out in the secret when they were talking about that, which they only described a little bit of what it really is about. We have proved conclusively today that the word God registered in the Bible, that book, just the word God alone, how strong that word is, that it has, um, the book, the Bible has maintained it. It is the greatest sale of any book in the entire world today. Did you ever think about that? It is the highly distributed and everyone, well, most everyone has one in their home in some form. Now, if that word will maintain in a book, in an inanimate thing, papers, what will it do through the use of our own body? You know, there's a lot of problems sometimes with the word God. I know even I have a very good, very uh, spiritual, religious, medium friend that does not like the word God at all. Maybe it's connected with a childhood thing. Maybe she feels that it detracts from the energy that she has. So we use so many different umbrella words to describe God, divine, universal intelligence, love, light, spirit, truth. But the only reason why I'm really talking about the word God and the energy God is because if you know anything about vibrations, the word itself actually vibrates at a higher octave than any of the other words. And that's why that came about. That's why it's used in the Bible. Whatever it means to you, whatever it is that you perceive the divine energy, unlimited, unconditional, pure love, you can create your own word for it and it will be just the same in your own life. But that is why they chose to use the word God because of its vibratory rate. So just think about that. Just the vibration alone has sold millions and millions of books. Heaven is everywhere. Present harmony within the individual, right where you are. You have the right to free will. And through your own thought and feeling, you can make it Hades if you want to, or you can make it heaven. If you spend the time that you to expend attempting to bring in Hades into your life, then that would not be a problem to manifest it. But in the same light, it has no problem to manifest heaven. How many people do you know that always complain about, I'm, I'm sick, I don't feel good, or there's always difficulty in my life. I never have enough money to pay my bills. Have you ever noticed that it never changes for them? What you com constantly think about, what you constantly talk about, you constantly re-attract back into your life, always. So it's really important to be mindful of what you're thinking about, what you're saying, and when you think you're just complaining or voicing your opinion, you're actually bringing things into your world. The moment we say, I want to create a certain condition, then believe it or not, we've actually put up a wall because when we say we want to create a condition and we want to release things that we don't do anymore, Thinking about what you don't want actually creates what you don't want. So you need to find a way to leave what you don't want, leave what I don't need away, aside, recenter yourself and refocus. This is what I want. When you have an illness, when you know someone who's sick or you yourself have something wrong with you, even in Reiki they teach you. Don't focus on the illness. Focus on what the healing is after it's complete, whole, perfect, and divine. Do you see how it kind of works the same? 
in your life and your thinking as well as it does in the healing. We want to always focus on what we want, not what we don't want. Leave the channels open, leave them clear. What is the greatest expression that brings all things in? I am abundant. Say it with me. I am abundant. I am knowledge. I am knowledge. I am harmony. I am harmony. I am love. Always own those. Make it yours. It is yours. There are so many things. I'm just skipping over so much here. <laughs> Jesus taught in simple terms that the object of life is not death, but a greater expression of life. Worship of God with all of our hearts and all of our strength frees us from conditions of limitation. No one needs to be isolated. It is possible to realize the sense of union with God's abundance right now. The first determination must be an effort to get rid of individual sense of limitation that we ourselves have built. There are several rather definite steps that must be taken to set ourselves free from limitation. The first one, is recognizing that you are God. God is you. We are all creators. We create every single day. When you wake up and say, this is gonna be a long day, I'm beat, I don't know if I can do this, you have just created a long day, extra work, and being extra tired. How do you fix it? How do you change it? Change your thinking. You take a breath and you say, I am God. I am that I am, and I am the creator of my day every day. You own it. Can you imagine how amazing this world would be if every child was taught this? From the time they were born to the time that they were adults, we would be positive, we would be love, there would be no jealousy, there would be no hatred, and there would be no lack, no lack of anything. You know, this I really had to learn in so many different increments. And still to this day, it is a work in progress. It really is. But, you know, an example on the subconscious is we have things, stuff, that is so deeply embedded into our subconscious that it creates, it creates constantly. Um, I was telling my students, when I was little, I was always told, don't go to bed with your hair wet and the fan on or the window open because if you do when you wake up, you will be sick. You'll have a sore throat. All my life, I believed it. Then I started studying about conscious and subconscious and superconscious. So I told myself, self, because we all talk to ourselves all the time, don't say you don't, we get our best messages in the shower, right? And in the restroom. And when we're doing laundry or whatever it is, because we are not focusing on the outside world, we're having a moment with ourselves. We get great information. So bring a pen and pa a paper with you whenever you think of these things, you can jot them down. But I, I says to myself, you know what? We have been told that this is the truth, but in reality, we know that it is germs and other people that are contagious that get us sick. So to prove to my subconscious, which holds as our truth, I washed my hair, went to bed with it wet, turned on the fan and left the window open. <laughs> and you know, that broke that belief system. I woke up as healthy as could be. So, abundance. That was a big one. Limitation, moving out of limitation and having trust. And I read the book of Job and I saw everything that Job went through. I, Reverend Larry gave me that. He made a whole copy of the whole book of Job and I took it and read it all. It was fascinating. 
And I don't know if it worked exactly that way, but I'll tell you, if you can let go of the exactness and pull the symbology out of it, it's extremely meaningful. So I knew that I had to make changes. Limitation, no limitation. I want to make sure that my bills are paid. I want to have enough for my children and for myself. I want to be happy. How many of you want to be happy and not worry every time the bills come in? Right? So we let it go. How do you do that? Well, studying the Kabbalion and other beliefs like The Secret, Tony Robbins, all of it together has been taught for 2,000 years. Really, they're just reteaching the same exact solid information in different forms for the different times so people can perceive it. Big leap of faith here. Tithing. I was always taught, well, you know, coming from having a Mormon and a Pentecostal background, Mormons, it's like that 10% tithing and you come in and you see your elders. And so that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. So I had to get over that. And I had to realize, then I talked to Reverend Joe and he says, you know, tithing means feeding back what it is that feeds you. So whatever it is that feeds you spiritually, you give unto that without conditions and it comes back a thousandfold. And I said to myself, but I do so much work at the church. You know, I take care of the yard and I clean and I do this and that. And, um, and he goes, so do you want somebody to come to your house and clean your house? and do your yard and as because if that's what you're unconditionally putting out then that's what you're unconditionally attracting and i says wow i never thought about it like that and then we had a guy come in and did a lecture on tithing and he says you know it was the hardest thing to do but you just got to have the faith because people hang on you hang on you're like i'm going to hang on to this money i'm not going to pay all of this because i might need it tomorrow and something is going to come up and it's okay to be you know to be safe but then i realized if i'm hanging on and i'm afraid to tithe and i'm afraid to give then that means that i'm afraid so i'm attracting lack for some reason i'm setting up this barrier that I'm not able to receive all that is mine by my own divine right. Each of our own divine right, we are creators. So I says, you know, I'm gonna do it. I'm going to start tithing. And that first year was a rough one, you know? I mean, it was rough for me on a financial level, but I did it. And I remembered the book of Job and I thought, you know, this guy's been through everything and he never lost faith in God. So I started tithing and uh, I think, and Reverend Rosie was here the same time that that guy gave the lecture and we were kind of talking about it. I was like, have you ever noticed that every time you tithe, within a week you get it back? Some way, somehow, so crazy. So I kept doing it and doing it. And even, you know, when you get a lot like the taxes and then you have to, you change your thinking. You change your thinking. It's like this. Now, every time I give, I get excited because I know I'm going to get tenfold back. And I'm telling you, in the last two years, God has, re has rewarded me beyond my hopes and dreams, beyond anything. When I got a job, I, I sat right here and I says, God, help me. I work so hard for so little. Please give me something that I can take care of my family so that I don't have to worry, so that everything will be provided for. I had this serious conversation in here all by myself. I went home from work. My husband was across the street. He comes over to, to me when I pull up and he goes, hey, Pete, our neighbor, wants to know if you want a job delivering coffee. And I looked at him and I said, pardon my language, no shit. <laughs> I said, did you tell him I was looking for a job? And he goes, no, he just called me over. And he's, he, you know, he receives at a store and somebody else said something and he goes, she would be perfect at that. And when I got my first paycheck, I cried. 
I did. And I looked at my boss and I says, you know, this is the first time in my entire life I've ever been paid my worth. And he's like, aww. <laughs> but you know what I honestly believe? I honestly believe that it was my gift from the universe because I never lost my faith. I gave 10% that I ever made, even when it was a lot or nothing at all. And I did it with faith in my heart, knowing that, that I'd be provided for. And so it's easy though to fall back into that negative thinking. And I tell myself every time I go to make my tithing, it's all false. Any worry that you ever have about anything, it's fake. That is an illusion. If you're worried about your health, you're going to attract unhealthiness. If you're worried about aging, you're going to attract age. If you're worried about not paying your bills, you're going to always be worried about not being able to have the money to pay for your bills. You can change it. You can change it. You can change your life. I promise you. You can have sleep, health, love, friends. I have some of the most amazing people in my world. All, a good percent of my family is all right here, right now. I have the greatest friends, the greatest teachers, the greatest family. And I might not have felt that way years ago, but I do know now that it's because I deserve it. And you deserve it. The greatest gift of all is learning to love yourself. And it isn't because if you love yourself, you can love everyone. It's because when you truly love yourself, you attract people that have the same values, who are capable of loving you, who are capable of loving their self. And if they're coming into your world as a broken person, you can't make them better but you can give them the tools to show them who they are and let them know that they are worth loving, that everyone is worth loving because we are God and God is magnificent. And that's exactly who and what we are. Love yourself, love yourself enough to recognize your own God power. I love this. This came I think from that masters and teachers of the Far East as well. Sit quietly and feel your own self, feel yourself and get to know these truths. Close your eyes. God, I am say this with me, God, I am all we are. I am divine intelligence. I admit this to myself. I remove all doubt. I am divine principle. I am divine love. It flows through me, flows through me. To, all to all the world. Now take in a deep breath. And now see yourself as God. Feel yourself as a divine loving presence. You can accomplish anything that you set your mind to. The only limitation in your life is that which has been set up by your imagination. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.